Mahoney County Board of Elections will hold a regular board meeting of the members of the board on Tuesday, August 6, 2024, 4 p.m. in the boardroom of the Mahoney County Board of Elections Office, 345 Oak Hill Avenue, Youngstown, Ohio, 44502. Would the director call the roll, please? Sandy Barger. Here. Attorney Boutros. Here. Ms. Pesta. Present. With the vice chairwoman of the Mahoney County Board of Elections, <clears throat> elect the pledge of allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can we have a moment of silence for our nation, please? Chair will now entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the July 2nd, 2024 adjourned regular board meeting. So moved. There's a motion made by Vice Chairwoman Sandra Barger. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Member Joyce Kilpesta. Is there any questions, comments, or concerns? Hearing none, would the director call the roll, please? Ms. Barger? Yes. Attorney Petrus? Yes. Ms. Kilpesta? Yes. Uh, the chairman will now take a, a Motion to approve the bills and accounts and payments for May, June, and July of 2024. So moved. There's a motion made by Member Joyce Kilpest. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Sandra Barger. Is there any comments, questions, or concerns? Hearing none, would the director call the roll, please? Ms. Barger? Yes. Attorney Beatrice? Yes. Ms. Kilpest? Yes. Chairman's report. I don't have an official report. I have some questions. How is the new building selection coming? It really isn't. Uh, we, we talked with realtors, we talked with some of the county officials. There's really no short term plans of moving out of here. Uh, there's not a lot of space available out there that suits our needs, that's uh -huh. centrally located on a bus route. Um, Toward the chair, I just saw the writing building in the Borman Plaza is up to at least. Um, that might be something you want to look at because it's a huge building. Mm -hmm. It's a big building. It would be centrally located. It's, it's got a drive-through. Like you could do drive-through. But service. we'd have to have a separate warehouse off of that, though, because it's not it, the square footage. Is, it's, I think it's 10, 000, eight or ten thousand square feet. And we're looking at twenty-two thousand square feet, which is a lot of that's warehouse space. So the board would have to make the determination to have a warehouse separate from our from our office. What about the building over by the Racino? Did we take a look at that one? The commissioners are looking at that. And I think there are negotiations with them, or at least some talks with them over at the old call center. That's something the commissioners are dealing with, with that. For us or for them? For the county. I give them a tip and they take it? Yeah. I don't I really don't like, I really don't like that building because it's really off the beaten path. Mm -hmm. um, we're not centrally located there. I mean people from the city would have a hard time. I know there's it's on a bus route, but still did we ever get a report from the prosecutors of what we're allowed and not allowed to do? Uh, they were talking with the commissioners about it, and they did talk with us about it. And I think it boils down to then we would ask for it, and they can still say whether or not they have the funding for it. And then it would, and then it would be based on how far we would want to take that. Are, are we prohibited? I thought we were going to get a realtor or ask if we could hire a realtor or something to help us. Find a location rather than. Oh, not an assessor. Is, is it a real you want to get? Someone can help us find a building. I was looking in the uh, I was looking in the um, uh, business journal and there's tons of buildings in there, but I I don't have time to you know. Make so you want someone who would be able to assess the business need against the building? Yeah. Okay. All right. So just put that up for bid. I think that's someone we could just hire. There was one other thing I was having you guys look into, and what was that? I forgot it. It might come out of my report when it comes to Facebook Live. Yeah. Oh, yes, that's that. right. Yeah. So I'll pass it over to the director's report. Director. Sure. Our next uh, meeting will be next week for certification. We have set the date yet. Jameson uh, Mills from the IT department will be here. He's going to be talking about three issues. He's going to bring a vendor with them. One is our website redoing the website to make it more up to date, more user friendly and functional, which we've been talking about for a few years. Yes. Um, right now,
now we're under the auspice of the county when it comes to stuff like that. So he's going to bring a vendor with them at our next meeting to talk about the upgrades that we can do on our website. Number two was the um, ability to stream this meeting live and have call-ins. He's been working on that. And he'll have a, a proposal, two proposals from, from us for that. And then the third issue is the camera, which he's uh, going ahead to order and look at the placement. And he'll have two quotes from us on the camera system as well at our next meeting, which we believe has to be done for certification. So Jameson will be dealing with all three issues next week. And did we make any headway on securing the absentee walk-ins? Remember about putting a gate up to protect? Yes. You mean the gate in early vote? Yes. Correct. And we've made no headway on that yet. Uh, we've talked with facilities at least, and facilities are aware of our concern of having a gate at the um, at the back of early vote. Okay. Like double doors by the restrooms, because that's where the unsecured entrance point is for the whole building. So door B, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, next to door B. And so uh, Zach and Alan from the facilities are aware of that. And but I said, you know, we need it kind of by October 8th if we can do that. So. Well, it's now August. So that's 60 days. Yes. We have to secure that area to be compliant. So we need to get it done. Right? Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, that's right. No, that's my report. Uh, something I was going to ask. Oh, uh, regarding our website, it was brought to my attention, I called Sandy on it, that our results aren't updated on our website. I think we're missing 21 to 22. It's something I think was some miscommunication between our, our IT department and our vendor. At, Ultimately, it was our responsibility to have those last two years up, and they weren't. Well, I was told the last years we had up was 18. Is that true? I'm looking at 20 right now, so I think we need 21, 22, and, of course, 23. Right. Well, why the delay in getting it up, do we know? Huh. Well, the reason, that that's how we ended up actually for Jameson, because we already had these on his plate, and then we're like, listen, we need a new website. This website doesn't have a user. It's not user friendly. It's not hard. It's hard to find the information and how you house the information and upload it or download it. I don't know this works. Correct. Mm -hmm. It's problematic. And so I think that's what ended up happening. So when we talked to him about it, we're like, we were missing. You know, we know that they can get the results of public record. It could be on the Secretary of State's website, but it should be on ours. And he was like, okay, gotcha. We're going to work on a, with a new vendor and we're going to have a brand new website where that would be not a problem. And that's something else he's willing to discuss with us at next board meeting. Meaning next week or meeting in a month? No, next, next week. Next week. Okay. Yeah. Can we have someone from the facilities here next week? Yeah. To talk about? It's not that hard of a job to put in a, a security fence. It really is not. I think that went through Granger and they have those that you can order right through Granger. Will Sean be back next week? Sean's back, yeah. Is he back? Okay. Can we get it at the board meeting? Yeah, yeah we just have to Sean or Alan will want to be here. Okay. Because okay. we're going to have to talk to Alan for parking for November anyway. I see in the director's report we need to authorize the director to hire the staff for the November 5th, 2024 general election. Do you need that by way of motion? Correct. Would someone, okay. would someone uh, provide a motion for us to authorize the director and assistant director to hire necessary staff and help? For the November 5th, 2024 general election. So moved. There's a motion made by Vice Chairwoman Sandra Barger. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Joyce Kelpesta. Is there any comments, questions, or concerns? Hearing none, would the record call the roll? Ms. Barger? Yes. Attorney Beatrice? Yes. Ms. Kelpesta? Yes. Uh, uh, then we have to authorize the scheduling of classes of instructions for precinct officials for the November 5th, 2024. Uh, general election. Is there such a motion? So moved. There is a motion made by jo member Joyce Kelpest. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Sandra Barger. Is there any comments, questions, or concerns? The, no, uh, no concerns, but thank you very much yes. for the list of everything. Very nice. Yes. Uh, of September, October, and November, and then November 5th is going to be here. So, so just what? as a comment, and thank you for thanking the staff. That takes um, this schedule, it looks so simple, it's nice and clean, but it takes Jenny, Jill, James, Malarkey, Annie, and 
Susie and they sit down together and discuss what classes, when, what's going to be feasible for the folks that are coming to work, are we going to need extra classes, is night classes something we need to do, and they work really hard on the schedule, and then uh, for us to get that room. So. Uh, uh, I'm just speaking on behalf of myself. I don't want any hiccups in this presidential election. We have to be given on the public our A game. That means from the board to the director to the assistant director. I don't want politics played. I want this run professionally. And I want everyone to keep their eye on the ball so the people in this town know that we I'll have something that's very precious in our hands that we're entrusted to guard, and that's their expression of their voice. So we have to measure four times uh, and cut once. We have to have belts, suspenders, and whatever else to hold our pants up. I want everything double, triple, quadruple checked. Okay? No sleeping at the switch on this election of all elections. All right. Uh, unfinished business. I have a question to. No vote. Oh, would the director call the roll? <laughs> Ms. Barger. Yes. Attorney Beatrice. Yes. Ms. Kelly Yes. All right. Can we move to unfinished business now? Thanks, Annie. Yes, that. Thanks, Annie. Uh, unfinished <coughs> business. Joyce, can you give us an update on what I heard is <laughs> the in camp ballots? What's going on with that? You mean challenges? No. To you said the hand counting. Hand and counting ballots. Oh, obviously. <laughs> they are hoping that it doesn't go to lame duck. They're really mm -hmm. worried about that. We're really worried about that, that it's going to go to lame duck and they're just going to push it through. It's, um, everyone is against it. I think the Secretary of State is also against it. He knows. Um, from what I understand, they've already been in contact with the governor's office. Uh, it doesn't look like it's going to go anywhere, but it's still on the table. And there is, there is one representative who is pushing it very hard, very, very hard. And that's the one that they're having, they're knocking their heads against the wall. So. I can't imagine yeah, it's, a nightmare. Uh, it, well, there's a lot of nightmares in that bill. <laughs> it's not just, I mean, that's not the bill. Yeah, it's a big, that bill's a big nightmare. <laughs> a big nightmare. But I know the Secretary of State is on board with not wanting the, you know, and then you have the two hundred million dollars that cost the state for the machines. You just throw that two hundred million dollars away, and it would cost another two hundred million dollars to even think about doing that count. So it's really, it's really a waste of money and a waste of time. What I don't understand is all of the audits we've done in the ten years I've been on this exactly. board. It's never been off. Well, you never have elections. You never have results on election night. You would have, you would wait weeks for results. They're also in part of that bill is not to even count the absentees on, on election day. It's to, put the, to stall them till the next day. So I mean, we would be going backwards instead of Ohio being the forward state. So we are. would be like Pennsylvania, and let's start right. processing it uh, right until the day of the election. Until the day after, maybe two or three days. Some some boards, like Franklin, it would take them a week to hand count all the ballots. They have nine hundred thousand voters. So, uh, it, it, it's I really a you know. All right. Anything else under unfinished business? Anything under new business? All right, good of the order, public comments. This is your chance to um, come up here and say whatever you'd like to say. All we ask is that you stand up, identify yourself. It's not a back and forth, but you can make whatever comments you want. Um, and your name, sir? Um, my name is Dale Goss. I'm an uh, EPAT poll judge as well. Uh, I'm going to read this. Uh, I'd like to read this to the board. To the Mahoney County Board of Elections, I'm speaking today on record of the most recent elections for March and the special election in June. I am an EPAD Joel, e -pol, e EPAD poll judge, and I have had the training for the equipment. In the first training, I was... Uh, <clears throat> I had mention of the ORC requesting a verification on the back of the license where you check for non-citizenship non versus citizenship. Um, I was informed by the trainer that they don't do that here. I, um, I brought this to the board's attention before the June primaries and was told it was taken care of. It has not been taken care of. When I worked in the June primaries, 
None of the poll managers were informed of the process, as well as any of the e-poll judges. Um, I was working pot four at the polling location on Cunningham Road in Poland Township. This process of checking the back of the license ensures the public that the accurate votes and legal voters are the only ones participating. In a recent complaint filed with the SOS, Secretary of State, in 2022, there was over a million voter irregularities and that there was 4.2 million votes counted, but only 3 million votes were identified as voters who casted votes. That is a difference of 1.2 million. The categories were illegal duplicate registrations, incomplete or unknown addresses, registered on or before date of birth, registered after deadline to vote, yet voted in the November 2022 elections. There were more categories in this article, but here I only listed a few. We are aware that the SOS uh, has just purged 499 non-citizenships of the Ohio voter rolls, which I was told non-citizens non could vote, but obviously they got on the voter rolls or they wouldn't have been purged. We are, um, uh, in uh, Mr. Beatrice, in past uh, meetings you have stated that the machines are not connected to the internet. Um, I was advised um, during when I was working the last uh, election cycle in June, I had noticed that there was a wireless connection on my e-pad. All of the co-workers that were working there with e-pads were able to see my account as well as me to see their accounts. We were able to see their party affiliations in the machines, or if the machines are not connected to any internet or wireless, which is internet, how is it the machines are able to count each e-pad numbers for us to see? If they're not connected to any, any internet source, then how is it that each of our e-pads were able to see the exact numbers of voters from each individual e-pad and they remain the same number throughout the voting cycle? This tells me that there is an internet connection which has been proven that can be easily manipulated by nefarious groups. This does not make me or any of the people around me feel these elections are secure. That's three minutes. Thank you very much. Is there someone else that has something to say, Brad? Yes, I'm Kathy Gage from the League of Women Voters of Greater Youngstown, and my comment concerns mail-in um, voting for the general election. Um, in Ohio, we have a four-day limit that the ballot has to be received, even if it's postmarked on time. And the, um, the standard for the post office is five days for, for delivering first-class mail and having it be considered on time. So that's a day longer than what our limit is. So. My, my suggestion or uh, comment would be communication with people who use mail-in voting. I mean, I know there is like a notice on the envelope that they get, please make sure it's postmarked prior to the election, but to somehow let them know that they could have it postmarked on time and it might not get here on time, and if it doesn't, then it won't be counted. Thank you. Thank you. Thursday. One o'clock. So maybe you get some of those things clarified about the four days. If they know it's election mail, then maybe they can move a little faster, you know, on, on that. Is there anyone else that has any comments? I'd like to submit these to the to Tom real quick, please. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Any other public comments? Go ahead, sir. State your name and... Dave Skirpak, and also a member of uh, Monterey County Election Integrity Committee. Uh, there have been a lot of voter registration irregularities around the state, uh, especially when done through outside third-party organizations, uh, most notably down in Hamilton County by an organization called Black Fork. I think I provided some information to Tom about this. Um, is there a way for us to get a list of new registrations, say like the last 90 days from any third party organization here in Mahoney County so that maybe we can provide some additional assistance into confirming that they're legitimate registrations? Once again, this is not a back and forth. If there's something you request from the director, assistant director, please write to them and we'll make sure that we follow the law and get back to you. Is there anything else? 
Anything else for good of your public comment? The only thing I want to say is when I said we weren't connected to the internet, our voter rolls are connected to the internet. Anyone can go on the internet and find out who's registered and who isn't. But our counting machines are not connected to the internet. That is a closed loop system. Well, if it's a closed loop system, then how does the e pads connect to one another while we're sitting there? Okay, once again, let me make let me make my comment. The counting of the ballots is a closed loop system. Access to who is a voter and who is not a voter is connected to the internet. The results you get on election night are the unofficial results. So we take the thumb drives from the machines, we put them into the uh, our counting machine here that is not connected to the internet, and all it does is tabulate those. We then do what's called an official canvas. An official canvas is where we take all of the ballots and we take and vote on the provisionals, and then we rerun every single paper ballot again through the machine, compare that to the computer stick and add in the provisionals that need to be added in, or any that they came in within four days as the uh, gentlewoman from the uh, League of Women Voters were telling us. After that process, we do what's called a hand count audit, where this board hand picks by random lot 5% of the voting precincts, and we hand count those. In my 10 years on the Board of Election, it has never been not more than 99.9 .9 or 99.8 percent accuracy. So, when, if someone were to say, "Are we connected to the internet?" Every board of elections, you can go down to the state, and their voter rolls are open to the internet. The counting, however, is not connected to the internet. It would be impossible for anyone to hack into our machines because they're not connected to the internet. It is a closed loop system with paper backup ballots that are secured in a vault and no one, no one person can enter that vault, two people, and we have a camera on the vault. All right, we need to set a time and a date for the special board meeting to certify the validity and sufficiency of the petitions for the November 5th, 2024 general election. The meeting must be scheduled between August 8th, 2024 and August 19th, 2024. So I'll make the motion that we schedule a meeting for Tuesday, August 13th at 4 p.m., which is a week from today. Can I just check my calendar? Sure. It's good for me. Okay. Yeah. All right, is there a motion then that we skip? Is that, did you make that I made the motion, yes. Is there a second? Second. Any comments, questions, or concerns? Hearing none, would the director call the roll? Ms. Barger? Yes. Attorney Beatrice? Yes. Ms. Calpesta? Yes. The <laughs> chair will now recognize a motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. There's a motion made by Joyce Calpesta to adjourn the meeting. Is there a second? I'll second. Seconded by Sandra Barger. Is there any comments, questions, or concerns? Hearing none, would the director call the roll, please? Ms. Barger? Yes. Terry Beatrice? Yes. Ms. Calpesta? Yes. This meeting is... Thank you. Thank you.